Welcome back to the football podcast from We Play Strong. In this episode, we talk about girls versus boys and the technical development of women and girls. We explore the use of matches against boys for preparation purposes and take a look at the dangerous narrative that spreads off the back of these matches and how women's football is deemed a joke after losing to young males in friendly matches. We'll take a look at how women's and men's football is compared and pinned against each other, especially in the media. And if this is a really fair comparison to make. My name is Rocky Heyakaya and I am your host. Joining us today are... Arsenal and Australia forward Caitlin Ford and Manchester City and Australia winger Hayley Rezzo. Welcome both. Thanks for joining us. Caitlin, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. It's good to be here. So thank you for having us on. Nice. And Hayley, how are you doing? Yeah, good. Thank you. Like Caitlin said, just excited to chat with you today. Cool. Let's get started because I'd like to know a bit about how you both started out in football. So, Caitlin, uh, you can go first. Uh, can you tell us about growing up in football and how that looked uh, for you? How I first got into the game was just at school um, in the back playground. Um, actually, with the boys, I grew up yeah, just playing any sport that the boys were playing in the school playground, if that was rugby league or football or, yeah, anything. And, um, yeah, that's how I got into the game. And at that time, I was doing a lot of other sports. Um, so when I came home to ask mum if I could play football um, with the the boys at my school, just the local team, um, she was a bit hesitant at the start because... Again, it would be another sport on the weekend and some more time. Um, but a little convincing from my sister, um, saying, no, mum, she's really good. She beats all the boys at school. Um, <laughs> you should let her play. Um, yeah, I went down for one one game and I ended up scoring six goals in my first game. So it was kind of, yeah, a no-brainer. She couldn't not let me play anymore. And, um, yeah, from that point on... That's how I got into the game and, yeah, haven't looked back since. And how old were you uh, scoring those six goals in your first match? Uh, I was nine. I started playing when I was eight. Um, my older brother played and I guess I kind of just got thrown into it. I can remember I'd be down at the local game when he was playing and for some reason they'd be short on numbers and, like, they would ask me to play and I'd always say, no, I was really shy. I didn't want to do it. Um, I guess they kind of made me because they were low on numbers. So I'd fill in with my brother's team, which was um, basically all boys as well. Um, and honestly, I didn't really enjoy it and I didn't really like it. Um, but <laughs> So I no think, six goals in the first no, match? No, di didn't score six goals, no. Uh, I'd just fill in, but then... I actually was quite good at it and from like I think it took a little bit of persuading and um, a, a little bit of time and I eventually ended up playing and being good at it and people were saying I was good at it but it took me a lot longer to actually start enjoying it rather than just doing it because I had to. Oh wow and do you remember what that turning point was when you were like okay now I am enjoying the game? I can't really remember when it was. Uh, I started when I was eight, so it probably was a couple of years later. Um, like Caitlin said, she was playing with all the boys. I was also playing with all the boys. I think the thing was that I was actually quite good and people could see I was good and people would tell my parents I was good, but I was just so shy and didn't want to do it. Um, it probably took me a bit of time to realise that I am actually all right at it and it's something I could do, but it probably wasn't until I was a little bit older. Okay, okay. Hey, and uh, growing up, were there like football academies and teams available for girls because you both started out with boys? To start off with, no. I mean, not when I first got into the game. Um, obviously, my local team was a boys team and, I mean, there might have been one or two other girls um, around that league. Um, there was actually another girl in my team that also went to school with me. Um, but besides that, there wasn't many girls playing. And I mean, I hadn't got that far into it to know if there was academies and stuff like that. But 
yeah, later, a couple of years later, um, that was when I found out there were platforms for just females, but it wasn't, um, it was probably the same with Rasso. Like in our States, there's, there was institutes and it's not in place anymore, but back then it was. So for example, me, it was the New South Wales Institute of Sport and that was just for the best uh, female footballers from, I don't know, 13 up to, yeah, I don't know, the girls that were in the national team at the time. So it was kind of a big jump um, with age age groups, but that was kind of the program you wanted to be into and that was kind of your pathway. Um, once you were in there, you were kind of seen for the national teams and stuff like that. So, But, yeah, we weren't into those programs till yeah, about 14 Fourteen, okay, yeah, and, and I read about um, a comment of you in that in an interview where you said that arriving at those elite girls, um, it, it was exciting and it was nervous as well because the older girls would give you a hard time. Um, can you explain a bit how, how that is? Because of course you come in as a freshman or a, uh, just a young, a young, a young girl, and then you have to prove yourself. But how was that for you coming in there? Yeah, I mean, it was obviously a bit daunting, um, but I think the best thing was the girls your age were the girls you then grew up playing with. So that was kind of your comfort blanket in a way, but I think it was just kind of what I had experienced through my whole career and it started off with the boys. Um, you just always had to prove yourself and I think going into that environment, you had to do the same thing because those older girls were obviously in the national team and obviously done the things that you were working Towards, so I think yeah, you just had to continue proving yourself, and yeah, it wasn't it wasn't easy. Obviously, those girls are protecting their positions, and when young kids come in, and you know, um, normally young and energetic, it's not really what they they like to see. So yeah, I guess they just kind of wanted to imprint that you have to prove yourself to be here. Yeah. No, I, I totally remember when I was 12 years old and um, yeah, started playing, was selected here for the district team in the Netherlands. And um, I came into the dressing room and they asked me, like, what position do you, do you play? And I was like, uh, number 10? No, Rachel plays on 10. I'm like, uh, I can also play on 7. No, Priscilla is playing on 7. And I was like, oh, you know, and it was so... But I mean, it's part of the game, I guess. Uh, and uh, uh, Hayley, um, how was that for you, like, growing up? Were there any, like... Yeah, academies, girls' teams for you to play in? Similar to what Caitlin said, I feel like when I was young playing for the local club, I didn't know anything about institutes or academies. And as far as I was aware, most people were just playing at my age for clubs with the boys and very few girls were playing. Um, I then transitioned to an all-girls team when I was 14. So back then, once you turned 14, it was when you started playing on an all-girls team. Um, and again, that was still my club team. We have the Queensland Academy of Sport in Queensland, which is what I was a part of, but I wasn't a part of that for a long while after. Um, while I was playing for my local club team, I was told to go and trial for the top league in Australia. Um, so my pathway into football and into, into the academies was completely different because I actually started playing in the top league before I was ever invited to go to an academy back in my home state. So I ended up moving away from my home for football, um, playing away and then being invited back into the academy. And at that time I was still young. And like you both said, it, it is quite daunting. You go in and they're all older girls and they all have their position in and you come in and you're trying to prove yourself and nobody really knows who you are or what you're about. So um, you, you try and earn their respect at the same time as proving that you are good enough to be there, I think. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. And um, so without playing with boys, we would have never found that love uh, for football because that's where it all started out. Um, so a few players have come out and said that it's better for your development as a female player to play with boys from a young age. So, for example, Vivian Miedema, she played alongside boys when she was young and perhaps did so for longer than many. Uh, she said that it really benefited her and that there's a big difference between playing with boys and with girls and would advise always girls to play with boys 
So it would be great to get your thoughts on this, because do you think that there are advantages to play uh, with or against boys? Um, and do you see another side to the game that perhaps makes you a better footballer? But let's start with the first question. What are your thoughts around this as a girl playing with boys? Um, very curious to know, Caitlin. Yeah, I mean, I have to agree with Viv from my personal experience and opinion. I think playing with boys um, from a young age developed me into the player um, that I am. And I guess as early as I did, I, I came through at 16. So I guess that's quite young for a national team. And I don't think that would have happened as early if I wasn't playing with boys just because I was challenged Um every day i mean i think you always have to prove yourself with boys you always have to earn their respect um to show you're good enough to to be there in a way i remember when i used to play and the opposition would see oh they have a girl on their team they would think that's a weakness and i mean once obviously i earned the respect of my teammates on my team they would be the ones that would stick up for me and obviously i would leave everything else to what happens on the field um, for me to prove myself. Um, but yeah, I think it was just always constantly, yeah, every game you had to you had to prove yourself and it wasn't easy. And yeah, I guess as you grow up, as boys grow, they get faster and stronger. Um, and it was just a continuous challenge, I think. Yeah, yeah. And Caitlin, uh, how old were you when you switched to an all uh, girls team? I think I was around 13 um, and I actually didn't want to. <laughs> I, I think I was a, a bit like Hayley. It was kind of that time where you were kind of pushed to, you, you had to go with girls then to obviously then be in that picture of playing with girls and in those leagues. But my personal yeah, opinion, I, I enjoyed playing with the boys. All right. Hey, and, and looking back, uh, because 13, 14 um, still sounds young to me. Um, would you, if you would, um, could do it over, would you stay longer with boys? Uh, I mean, looking back at how my pathway planned out, probably not, just because it obviously worked for me the way that it was. Um, but even when I did go into the girls' environment, like I said before, with the New South Wales Institute, um, we, as a team, were actually put in the, the best boys league in Sydney. So um, we our academy was split off into two groups and the younger half of the girls played the under-14s and the older half played the under-15s. So even though I wasn't on the team with boys, we were playing against boys week in, week out. Does it make you a better footballer to play with or against uh, boys? I think so as well. I think boys are just genetically built differently, um, like their physical characteristics, um, like whether that be speed or power, they're, they're just stronger athletes. And um, us as women playing with them, I think helps in that, as in that aspect um, because you're playing with a higher level. So for me, obviously coming through playing with the boys, I think it probably developed my sharpness, um, my decision making, my speed, my power, all of those things. So then when you make the transition over to playing with all girls, you are probably at a higher level than the girls who have just come through playing with girls. Yeah. Okay. Hey, and do you think that the, how is the current landscape uh, in, uh, in Australia? Are there more opportunities for girls? the pathway for women's football in Australia now is different. Uh, I'm, I mean, I feel like I haven't been in Australia for a long time, but mm -hmm. I do think that there are platforms for girls to play with girls from a younger age. And there are, I don't know whether it's academies or institutes or what it is, but I think because more young girls are getting into the game, there's more opportunities for them to train and play together. Whereas when Caitlin and I were younger, not many girls played, so we were playing with the boys, whereas now so many more young yeah, girls yeah. are playing and they're having those opportunities to play alongside other girls who want to play as well. 
Yeah. The funny thing is, is that now, um, for okay, I, I'm I'm also a bit older than you, but so when I started out to play football, um, the chance of me uh, getting selected for the national team was was bigger than it is now because there's so many more girls playing. Um, do you do you see that as well, Caitlin? Like the competition with these younger girls is growing as well. I feel like it is different with how girls are coming through, and I think. The development is different because just when I look back when me and Haley were the same age and a few of the other girls around our age in national team like Sam Kerr, Emily Van Egmond and Steph Catley, it was that's we all went the same way with boys and I feel like we just developed earlier where I think the programs in place now are all females and I think girls are just developing later. So I don't know, in a way it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot coming through but I think that's just because it's taking girls longer to develop than it did when we were younger but Mm. I mean that's just my personal opinion I could be wrong but I I just no I get it It, it, it's 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 a feeling that you have like um um and I mean there are naturally some physically and technical differences between the women's and the men's game but how important is it for your physical and technical development as a player? Because Haley, you also said like I learned to just control the ball quick, quicker. And um, what else is 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 good for your development, playing with or against boys? I, I just think like in Australia, it's really good because I know there are a lot of pathways now for girls to have girls teams. But when I look back at if I was in a girls team, I feel like it would just be kind of a bit standoffish um, because you don't have to prove yourself you're with your friends and stuff like that whereas when I was in the boys team I knew I know I wouldn't get the ball if they wouldn't pass me the ball if I didn't have to prove myself or to go put in a tackle against the boys to show that like I'm here to play too you know what I mean whereas I just think the mindset in a girls team is different you know you're all the same you're just passing it around that you it's, it's just a different feeling that if I look back and at the age I was in, if I was with girls, I just think for me and for you, Haley, as well, it would have been the same. It would have been too easy in a way. And thinking back to when I was playing with the boys because it was the same situation for me where I, I feel like the boys were like maybe threatened by having a girl on the team. Like they would think that they were were better and you would have to prove yourself. And it, I feel like it took time for them to realise, oh, she's actually good, if not better than us. Mm-hmm. Um so, uh, yeah, I, I definitely agree. I was just, I was literally just thinking back to how long ago it was that I was playing with the boys and trying to prove myself, I guess. Yeah. Do you think it made you interpret the game differently, playing with boys? Yeah, I do. I think, kind of like I said earlier, it's the, the decision-making, the sharpness that you need on the ball when you're playing against boys, which, as you progress down the line so now as professional footballers probably back then when I was 13 playing with the boys I didn't realize that it was helping me but now when I look back on it and see that playing against boys you need those those things those that that tactical awareness the decision making all those things which help you as a footballer now I can see that it has helped my game from back then to now. Do you think it can be challenging socially or mentally playing with boys? Because you both also said, so you have to prove yourself maybe even extra when you play with boys. Have you ever um, had any obstacles socially or mentally playing with boys? To be honest, no, not really, because I was a little tomboy myself. So I just considered myself as one of the boys. But um, no, I would say the only thing that happened with me when I was younger was I actually can't really remember the situation now but as I said before there was another girl on my team and that was my best friend at the time and I just remember her getting kicked I must have been a dirty tackle or something like that and I actually stood up for her and I got in a fight with one of the boys in a a punch-up so (laughs) and after I ran off crying to the car to mum because I thought I was going to get in trouble but I just remember then, like, that was probably my only obstacle when I was younger, besides obviously having to prove yourself in the games every time. Um, But other than that, not really. It's just obviously, yeah. The boys, and I think even the parents of the opposition team as well would get a bit funny um, 
about me playing as well. Obviously, I think as a as a girl, I don't know, getting the better of their son or the boys' team, they didn't like that at all. So, yeah, I think that was the only other obstacle. But I feel like that didn't really have anything to do with me. It was more the parents and obviously my coach and stuff like that. But I just remember those little conversations or hearing those things. But those types of things wouldn't really faze me. But I guess it's just funny to look at now that the impact that you could have just because you're a girl. If that was another boy getting the better of his son, he wouldn't care, you know what I mean? It was just, yeah, because I was a girl. I had the exact same um, experience as Caitlin because I can remember when I was young and we were, I was like probably the only girl um, there and they were doing like a grading system for the young boys team. So there was like the first team, the second team and the third team and I can remember not making the first boys team because they just wanted all boys on the team and they said that to my parents. And I should have been on the first team with the boys, but they'd said, oh, she's a girl. But, I mean, oh, I was as good as them. So, And they had even, I can remember my parents were so angry because they had said that to them, well, she's a girl, so she can't be on the first team. Insane, right? I, I the funny the funny thing is I've experienced the exact same thing where they the coach of the first team just said uh, we're not selecting girls for the first team, so you can go to the second team, which is like already a, a big mess. But I even remember, like I think I spoke uh, about this in another previous episode in this podcast, is that when I was 14 years old, one of the parents, one of the fathers of them of the other team came came up to me. I scored three goals in the first half. It's 3-0 and I feel like, hey, you know, I feel feel like, I, I, you know, and then we went off to the dressing room and this father comes up to me and he just stands in front of me and he says, yeah, I don't believe that you're a girl. Uh, pull down your pants and show it to me. For me, I think the difference between me and you also uh, is that my team didn't have my back. So um, that's where... I didn't really feel safe in that environment. So when people people would come up to me, I would have to stand up for myself and I would look back and my team would not be there. So, um, yeah, I'm happy that you I was, didn't. Okay. I was yeah. quite the same. I was quite the same as that. I don't think the boys really liked having me there. Um, when I look at it for my development now, I think it was a good thing, but I, I, think, I don't think they, they liked me being there, I don't think their parents liked a girl being better than their sons. I, yeah, I'm like Caitlin. I think Caitlin's is, it's good for Caitlin. And, but I definitely didn't have that same feeling when I was playing with the boys as much mm. as when I look back on it, it probably was a good thing. It was hard for me. And I was really shy, which probably didn't help. You hear this story more where the team has the back of the girl and that it's that that they support her. But um, yeah, if that's not the case, it is re- it can be really lonely, right? Can we just also go back to what you said before about that guy saying that he had to like pull your pants down? What? Like you want to know if like I did it? Cr- no, no. <laughs> I mean, no. yeah, no, <laughs> no. I I just think that's like that's crazy. Like a a parent did that, right? And how old a parent? Were you? I was, I was, uh, Max, I was like four, 14, 14 years old. So I feel um, like that's even quite old to go up to a girl or boy and say, do that. You know what I mean? I mean, it doesn't matter what mm. age you are, but you know what I no. mean? Like I was, I, I was pretty tomboyish as well. Um, but it made me very insecure about my self image, um, having all of these comments and that really impacted my, my self image. So when I was, um, 17, uh, started playing with, with girls or women, I was so happy. I was yeah. so relieved just being able to, Oh, wow. I got a team and it's so nice be together in a dressing room. And then we also played against young boys or young men. Um, and that made it all, it didn't even matter if we lost with a, with a large number. It was just like, but we, we have each other's back, you know? So, um, yeah, it was, um, it was tough. Yeah. I can imagine. <laughs> 
Okay, we're moving on. Um, so there are a lot of professional women's team who train or play against elite boys teams to use this to their advantage and gain a newer perspective on the game. However, whenever the younger boys team win, this can be sensationalized in the media, which opens up the floodgates for online trolls who don't appreciate that the women's and men's game have different styles of play. So their go-to comment is, you got beat by 15-year-old boys, and the media of often doesn't help. So headlines read, for example, U.S. women's team embarrassed by under-15 boys academy team. Um, what happened to girl power? So also, of course, the Australia's national women's soccer team lose 7-0 to an under-15 boys side. And we can go on. Um, so... Um, Caitlin, can you explain why these practice or training games against elite boys are played? Yeah, I mean, it's because that girls team are the best girls for that age or for the country or whatever it is. And you can't play another opponent to be challenged um, by other girls, I guess, the same age or maybe older girls. Um if you're younger, but I guess as a national team to, you know, get the same challenge as an international match, you have to play boys and younger boys, um, 15, 16, I think that's roughly around a level that is good to be challenged. Anything older than they're not boys anymore, they're men. And it's just obviously totally different. So I think that's the age that is, you know, a good level to be challenged. And obviously boys are quick and fast and strong. And yeah, it's just to challenge you as a player and as a team. And I guess the only way to get that is to play against boys or young men. Yeah, like like Caitlin said, you, being at the top, so being at your national team or at the top level, you can't play against a women's side that is going to challenge you because... If you're playing against one of the W League teams in Australia, or it, it's 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 just not a comparison, and that's why you have to play against these boys because you're at the top. But I, I mean, uh, I think men they're genetically superior to women; they just are. So it seems like when you say it and you say, "Oh, we need to play against 16-year-old boys," that calls for trolls to say something because we're women and they're 16 year old boys but because of their makeup it actually makes sense and it helps us well for, for example us on our national team um prepare to pl for playing games against other international teams by playing against these boys who have the power have the speed have the endurance have the technical ability that is at the same level of our, as ours yeah very understandable so online trolls if you're listening um so but what what is what is there to win in these games caitlin so i remember when we got beat by 12-0 or any of those big numbers in the boy against boys i wasn't I, it didn't feel very disappointing because we knew like okay this is probably going to happen it's going to be a struggle um but what is there what what is there um to win for you yeah, I think in these games is obviously to get a good session in. Obviously, it's going to be a hard um, game. Um, so, yeah, physically, mentally, how you, you um, yeah, turn in these moments, you know, when obviously you're getting picked out, you may be just defending the whole time. Um, this can happen in an international game against an opponent, uh, you know, for periods of the game. But also, I guess, just how they exploit us as well and where we need to be better obviously you only get that from playing games so yeah I think games are valuable in many ways and yeah against boys especially um if you, we can't play international games then yeah it has to be against the boys to get the same sort of yeah I guess outcome yeah hey, and do you feel like your coach is approaching the game differently when you play against boys Haley? The coach approaches the game the same because for us it's about learning um, and for us it's about developing and getting better. And, um, so I don't think that it's any different. It's it's like Caitlin said in a sense. It's like a training session. So there's nothing to there's nothing to lose in it. It doesn't matter if the score's seven nil or we win seven nil because at the end of the day you're playing against a quality opposition. 
you're having to think sharper because your decision making has to be quicker and you're coming out of the game you're able to analyze the game um based off playing against somebody who's at the same level for the boys they they have more motivation than what we do going to these games they would hate to lose to girls and whereas for us we know it's going in for a learning experience and realistically we probably are going to lose you know what i mean so i think also when we win because we we haven't just lost 7-0 and that's it we've also yeah. beaten boys teams before but you never hear about it because oh. because where are all where are all of the people online then nobody cares because all they want to do is say that you've lost to the boys yeah, because yeah. you play exactly. boys teams so many times you win some you lose some just like international football you win some you lose some but yeah they'll only yeah. pick up on the one game you lost like 10 years ago yeah <laughs> I, I'm, when i say we we've, we're prepared to go into lose it i mean because we're going in to try things you know what i mean and right. it's not always going to work but we obviously go out there to win but if we were to it wouldn't be the of end course. of the world for us which obviously for them it would be it would a be a very hard hit to their egos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think they would ever overcome that. I, I remember this guy coming up to me. Um, I was I was out here in Amsterdam when uh, a few years ago, and he came up to me and he was like, "You are the first girl that ever gave me a nutmeg, and that's years ago, and I can't get over it." I'm like, "Come on, man!" You know? See, so. because it hits their ego so bad. They remember yeah. that many years on. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. It's pathetic. <laughs> but okay. Um so we have seen the negative comments online where people were being disrespectful to the women's game when they are beaten by uh, by a boys team. We just spoke about it. Is there anything that you would like to say back to these people, Caitlin? Yeah, I mean, obviously when you see it, I mean, you just kind of laugh and shake your head because these people have no idea and they probably haven't even watched a women's game or they just want to jump on board on these things and I mean, for us, the most important thing out of that was we stuck as a team and we didn't let it phase us in a way. And yeah, I mean, it just makes me want to play boys again and actually say, well, come to the come to the game, let's have a crowd. And I mean, I'm sure that would even motivate us even more to prove a point. And I'm sure we would do it as well. But yeah, I mean, it's always these people on the, the computer, Twitter, whatever it is that would never probably say that to your face. They just have something to hide behind. So, yeah. yeah. No, and I, the funny thing is that uh, Kenza Dali, uh, a French play, player, you probably, you maybe know her as well. Uh, she just said, like, I would just say, let's play 1v1. <laughs> Come on, let's play. <laughs> well, it is, it is a bit like that because the people who are making these comments, they're just your standard average person at home and they wouldn't come close to a professional athlete, whether that be male or female. It it doesn't matter. They wouldn't come close. And I think that too. I'm like, I would love to go against you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's exactly. easy to it's easy to write negative comments online. It's it's like almost harder for them to just say something nice or but like Caitlin said, it'd just be so cool if they just came out and watched a game because they probably have never even watched watched yeah. us play before. They just want to make a comment because it's easy. Do you think there's anything that needs to change in the de development of young girls' football as they are growing up, Haley? I think that these girls coming through now should play with the boys. Um, and again, like Caitlin said, they seem to be developing a little bit later because they're coming through the youth system with the girls, which probably isn't at the highest standard whereas they may develop quicker if they are playing with the boys. But that would be one thing. But also it's probably just like investment in women's football and if they want to have these pathways for, for young girls, they need to invest in it more so that they can be playing and training at an elite level from a younger age leading into a professional career if that's where they're headed. I think on the flip side, in saying I think it's better than better playing with boys but back then that was kind of our only option so I think the positive to see is that there are that many girls playing that they can create teams and leagues and I think that's already a massive step within the game from grassroots level and yeah I think obviously that's that's bringing more girls through so there are going to be more girls to choose from but it, as I said before I think that's just 
is what is developing girls a bit later on because the level is different. But I think, you know, when they get to that point, there's going to be a lot more girls coming through or there should be because there's a lot more girls playing, which is a positive to take out of that. You see in the youth systems now, like when we were younger, there wasn't these youth programs, like these future Matildas and young Matildas, they're all living in the same state and training together every day. Um, all I was going to say was back when we were younger, they didn't have that. So women are, the girls are obviously developing together in a more professional league, whereas we didn't have that. So if we weren't playing with the boys, we wouldn't have really had anywhere else to go because there weren't girls playing together yeah. elsewhere. I think yeah. adding on that too, I think I think it's different for us three, as we've said in that situation, we were a bit more tomboy and fine in that environment, whereas some girls maybe in that age would have liked to play, but they weren't comfortable to be with boys. So that's probably obviously opening the doors now as well for more girls to want to play, I guess. Yeah. All right. And it's time for our final question, because with all of your experience and knowledge, what would you advise young girls to do? We have a lot of young listeners uh, to this podcast. Uh, so what would you advise young girls to do to become pro players? What's best for their development, uh, Haley? I truly don't think there's a right or wrong way to become a professional athlete. Um, I think there are so many different pathways, and I always look back to how I did it in Australia, and that worked for me. But in England, in France, in the Netherlands, that, that there are probably different pathways all over the world and different ways in which people are becoming professionals. So I personally don't think there's a right or wrong way. I just think it's about sticking to it. Um, if you want to play with the boys, that's that's great. That's what a lot of us did and it worked. Um, if there is uh, growth in women's teams in countries or places where people can do that, I think that's also that also works. Um, it just, I think it's it's very dependent on people's situations and the pathways they have to becoming a professional. Okay, yeah, it's very personal. Um, okay, Caitlin, what's your yeah. piece of advice? Um, mine would be, it's something that if I could go back, I would change and I didn't learn this until I went to Japan to play that I just know when you're younger, obviously you want to show that you're good and to get away with things, you just always use your dominant foot because you never want to look bad. But until I went to Japan and I was forced to do everything right and left footed and I had my teammates laughing at me sometimes when I used my left foot because it wasn't the best. But in that one year I was there, I seen how much I improved that I just made me think if I had been doing this my whole career, how much better my left foot would be, even if you know, it was really bad and people laugh at you, at least you're trying and it's going to get better. And I just, yeah, I just see how far I've come with using it from that point um, that I just wish I did it a long time ago and wish someone told me that, um, you know, when you're in a passing drill, when it's going around to the left, use your left foot. It's just always you just use your right foot to get away with doing it perfect. And yeah, that's just something I really wish I could go back and, and do. Yeah, nice one. Haley. I saw you smile a bit. Um, I think we all... How, how was your left foot or are you left footed? <laughs> no, I'm right footed. I was just <laughs> laughing because it is, it's so true. Like it, I, I think even sometimes now when you are watching younger kids or the younger kids are coming through the ranks and you're training with them and you're going around to the left hand side, you see they'll still use their right foot. Um, so just think Caitlin's advice is great. Definitely use both feet. It will help you in the long run. So we're going to play a game of Would You'd Rather. You get five crazy dilemmas to choose from and you have to choose. So after every dilemma, we want to hear why. So, okay, that's, that's pretty easy, right? You can do that. Pretty straightforward, yeah. Depends what the dilemmas are. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, here we go. The first one is Would You'd Rather have one incredible season or five average seasons? Caitlin, you go first. Mm, I think one incredible season um, because I think that just changes everything for you. Um, yeah, you smash one season and I mean, a lot of teams coming are coming, a lot of endorsements. Obviously, that's what you want to do. You want to smash a season. So I think, yeah, I'd go for one incredible season. 
I don't think you want to be average. And like Caitlin said, yeah, you have an incredible season. It probably leads on to another incredible season. Um, but yeah, it's no fun being average. Would you rather lose every game of the season or would you rather just miss the playoffs? Hayley. I'd rather just miss the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, is that a quick trick question? No, I, <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't like losing. I have to agree. I think the same thing. I think, I think if you changed that question and said, if you went all the way and then lost the grand final, I feel like that's worse. Sometimes, like, say if you lose the grand final, you're just like, oh, I should have just lost the semi. It almost mm. makes it worse. But <laughs> Okay, the third one. Wear stinky wet boots or stinky sports bra? Caitlin. Stinky wet boots. I feel like that's fine when they're on your feet. You, I mean, I feel like we do wear stinky wet boots but to put on i was a, gonna say that <laughs> yeah, you anyway. have a <laughs> yeah but to put on a stinky wet sports bra uh, like that would just be so gross oh, yeah i agree <laughs> i agree i i also totally agree and just what you, I, I also wanted to say like aren't boots always wet and stinky but yeah pretty pretty much, much. they yeah. get pretty to much that right. point. yeah we have yeah. the um, like boot bag that all the boots are in, and oh my gosh, when you open it, <laughs> with them all in there. Disgusting. But is, isn't the, isn't the shin guard even worse? Oh, yeah, I mean, I've bad. had my, sh I've only had one pair of shin guards since I was twelve, so mine are pretty, <laughs> pretty gross. Like, if I was to lose any, I would give my boots any day, but no one's taking my shin pads. Oh my they, god, they, they're, they're disgusting. So though, if I showed you, there's like blood in them skin like it's gross oh <laughs> and i've never washed them oh my gosh Are but is this, is this yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i feel like that's normal a lot of people do that no i've definitely changed mine <laughs> no i think it's a superstition thing like these are my shin pads and i'm staying with them win the women's champions league with your club or the world cup with your home country Haley. Um, win the World Cup with your home country. Um, I just think it's just such an honour to play for your country and we've got such a good group of girls in such a great environment and I think it's been a dream of ours for a long time to win something as a national team. Um, it's the biggest thing in the world, isn't it, um, in football playing in a World Cup. So, yeah, that's that's the absolute dream to win a World Cup. Okay, so it wasn't that difficult. I thought this was going to be a bit more hard. But And you, Caitlin? Yeah, I mean, obviously I'd love to win them both. But if I had to choose one, I would agree it has to be the World Cup um, for our country. Yeah. And, I mean, looking forward, the next World Cup is on home soil for us. So, I mean, I don't think you could paint a better picture than that. So, yeah, I mean, it would have to be a World Cup. But as I said, I'll take yeah. both. No <laughs> yeah, it would take either. <laughs> it wouldn't matter. Like, okay, this one or the other. Which one? Do you <laughs> yeah. No, but I mean, the World Cup in Australia is going to be insane. How, how are you, like, looking forward uh, forward to that, um, Hayley? Oh, I can't wait. I think playing in a World Cup is just such an incredible thing. But to think about it being in your home country, having your friends, your family, and basically the whole of Australia behind you cheering for you it's it's such an exciting thought and we can't wait we honestly can't wait and I mean like Caitlin said there's no better way to go about that World Cup than to to win it yeah no definitely it's probably going to be the first time that I'm traveling to Australia because I definitely don't want to miss that this is the last one legends in the game who still play is that for you Martha or Carly Lloyd Caitlin? I think they're both incredible players. Um, oh, that is, this is probably the hardest one. I that would is say. tough. That's really tough. Uh, yeah, I mean, Marta has obviously scored some incredible goals and just changed football. And I guess in a way for how males look at the game, I think Marta was the first player to kind of take that to, wow, this this girl can play you know what I mean and right I mean 
I think, she, yeah, in Brazil as well, obviously being from a skillful country and she was just looked at, you know, as one of the best footballers, not just as a female, but as a footballer. So I think that's huge. But Carly has obviously been incredible as well and what she's done for the game and what she, I think what's impressive for me is on the big stage, she has just performed um, time after time, yeah. time after time and come up big for the US when they've needed her and obviously her age <laughs> and to keep going and play at the level that, you know, she's been at the whole time is ridiculous. So I, I honestly can't choose between the two. I can't. So Caitlin lo uh, is losing this game now. I'm sitting on the fence. <laughs> I'm sitting on the fence. I thought you were just going to say one and then I was just going to say the other to make it even, but then you oh, didn't yeah. oh, yeah, So I was that. like, oh, just say Marta and then I'll just say Carly. <laughs> okay, Caitlin and Haley, thank you so much for coming on to the football podcast. We've spoken about the development of elite girl players, explored the best environment physically, technically and mentally, but most importantly, how we can create an equal playing field where girls can fully reach their potential. We hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks again and be sure to follow and subscribe to We Play Strong. Bye bye. Bye, thank you for having Bye. us. Thank you.